But yeah, so this is my this is my scenario for how Bitcoin will hit 100k, right? This is my potential scenario. So go over to the website here, US Bureau of Labor Statistics. I'll pop a link, uh, somewhere for you guys to check it out. You can see here that we have the official stats that we get from the government, right? So the government, they put together all this information and this is what they publish for us to see, right? So right now, if you take all of these items here, all of these items, accumulatively, across the board, CPI, which is Consumer Price Index, it's the consumer inflation that essentially we see, is at 8.5%. you got to think of CPI as a gas pedal. Like, people think that the CPI is at 8.5%, so they think that inflation is 8.5%. But the way the CPI actually works is it's like a gas pedal in a car and so if cpi is at 8.5 percent it stacks it means that it's on 8.5 percent accumulatively year upon year it's not saying that inflation is at 8.5 percent it's saying that's the rate of change year upon year so for example if the cpi went from eight percent to five percent that does not mean that we've had a uh, interest rate or an inflation rate decrease doesn't mean that inflation has gone down to five percent from eight just means that the gas pedal has been lifted and inflation is increasing slower at five percent than eight percent year on year so just remember that this is not an interpretation of where inflation is at this is an interpretation of how fast the inflation is rising right year upon year this is why it's a 12 month percent change so with that in mind we can see that inflation is not going anywhere in fact inflation is getting worse and worse and worse month upon month yet the markets are not seeing the growth from the inflation why is that let's go and have a look at some of these figures quite interesting so if we remove all items we can go and pick specific items on this list for example gasoline we can see that gasoline is up 58 percent which is why your uh, fuel prices are so high right now if we go look at energy now this is an interesting one because energy is something that has a trickle effect has a knock-on effect to everything else right because one as human species we need energy to survive and two we need energy for everything that we do in life right so food manufacturers they use energy so food goes up it has a knock-on effect right so every sector every uh area in the world that provides us with a service or a good or an asset or whatever is going to be hit by the energy inflation as a knock-on effect so if we click on this we can see right now that it's a 33.3% increase in the rate of inflation year upon year in energy, which is on par with 2008. You see that? Energy is the first inflation marker. Exactly. We can see that we're on par. We've actually exceeded 2008 with the inflation in the energy sector right now. Another interesting one is new vehicles, as we can see, is way up at 12.4% uh food we can see food well up in the 8.8 percent you know pick any of these guys they're all on the rise and the thing that i wanted to point out here is if if inflation is still rampant if inflation is still on the increase huge huge inflation then why are we not seeing the growth in the markets because we know that inflation is good for the markets because it inflates the price of assets, goods, and services because it devalues fiat currency against those assets. And so the stock market loves inflation, right? So if inflation is still rampant, why isn't the stock market going insane right now? Reason for this is because of the rate hikes that we're seeing right now. So if we go over to here, uh here is the federal reserve rate hike we've got another one coming up on the 4th of may yeah the dollar's so strong exactly seb so and i'm gonna get i'm gonna wrap all this up 
and give you guys an explanation and a forecast for future results with Bitcoin and the stock market. So right now, we've had a rate hike in the US from 0.25% up to 0.5%. Now, that may seem like a very small amount, 0.25%. Uh, rate hike but it's actually massive because if you go and look at the m3 money supply the way that that's been inflated you'll see that a small percent change here will be exponentially exacerbated across the board because of the m3 money supply so even a small rate hike has a very big um splash damage if you will across the board um so it's interesting to see that we've got another rate hike on the 4th of May, and I think they're going to rate hike, rate hike, rate hike. Now, this takes us back to this. This takes us back to this. Inflation is high, which means that growth should be high in the stock markets, but it's not. And what's happening here is the rate hikes are artificially suppressing the impact the inflation can have. It's kind of like they do a rate hike and then all that really does is it takes the spring of inflation and coils it down a little bit more and compresses it and suppresses it now eventually that inflation spring is going to release because it's just built up energy the inflation's still there but the government is hiding it behind the rate hikes because then they can tell me and you that they've got things under control and they can keep, you know, keep a good uh, morale, if you will, out there in the public eye. So they can lie to us because the real numbers here are showing different to what they're saying. They're saying that they're fighting inflation. They're bringing inflation down. Yet the CPI and all other inflation across the board is actually increasing month on month, which is interesting because that really shows us their hand doesn't it because with every rate hike we have increasing inflation but the rate hikes are suppressing the inflation and coiling that spring so i think what they're going to do i think what they are going to do is they're going to continue to do rate hikes because then they can hide this idea of inflation in the markets and inflation in consumer prices they're going to every time they rate hike the market goes down because the dollar strengthens they're going to continue to rate hike over the coming year rate hike rate hike rate hike to the point where they feel like they are losing control over the markets to the point where they feel they are about to tip the markets over the edge because remember if the stock market crashes the economy crashes if the economy crashes people lose faith in fiat currency and then the whole system falls apart they can't allow that to happen. They're going to push this thing to the point where it's about to fall into the precipice, where it's about to die. Then they're going to ease off the rate hikes. Now, remember that with every rate hike they do over this year, inflation is still increasing. The rate hikes just suppress the inflation like a cold up spring because the inflation cannot express itself on the market on assets goods and services so it's like it's like this built up energy in the background so as soon as they stop doing rate hikes because they feel like they're going to push the market over the edge all of that inflation all of that pepped up energy that's been in the background is going to hit the markets all at once this is where we see the 100k bitcoin this is where we see the 200k bitcoin this is where we see hyperinflation it's because every rate hike is going to suppress the markets suppress the markets suppress the markets but as soon as they stop doing that all of that nasty inflation at the background because remember that they're still printing currency in the background we've we've been on congress we've read the congressional files we know how they hide this stuff with grants and things like that so they're still printing funds in the background the same thing happened in 1929 right is there was hard times economically everyone in germany all turned into being savers 
they hid their money under the mattresses in shoe boxes and they, they saved and saved and saved when they had quote unquote good times again the velocity of spending increased because they went from savers to being consumers again and that uh, inflation was allowed to hit the markets all at once then we had hyperinflation in the markets didn't we i can see a same thing happening here so with all of this being said that is how you will get your 200k bitcoin your 100k bitcoin is when they have done enough rate hikes where they feel like they've done enough damage to the markets where they feel like if they do any more it will roll this thing over down a hill then they will ease off and then all of that inflation that um all that anxiety will hit the markets at once the anxiety of the people of being a saver will release velocity of spending will increase and that is where we will see huge inflation and then we'll see a crash does that make sense but this is not going to be until maybe next year or even the year afterwards uh yeah that's it they won't let it crash we will see weakness on the weekly similar to dot com bubble but we will release interest rate in one to five years yeah yeah i agree similar to the 2001 market crash you want 100 kb <laughs> and another thing guys right this is how we need to chart these alts now because we have an increasing dollar and the psychology of the people is to be savers and not consumers. We can see by charts that the velocity of spending has decreased. The velocity of spending is down. And all that means is it just means how, ma how many times is a dollar circulating to buy assets, goods and services. We can see it's it decreased. It's down right now because no one's really spending. People are saving, right? So the psychology of the person is to save money. And so we're seeing less volume in assets like Bitcoin and the stock market. We're physically seeing that. We're seeing less volume. And so this basically means that we need to throw our time frames out. We need to throw our time frames out to weeklies and monthlies and dailies. Okay? Because if we're trying to trade one hour, four hours, it's incredibly difficult because the volume isn't really there. And so what we're seeing, we're not seeing these gradual gainers. We're just seeing big green candles or big red candles where people are getting stopped out. And we're just having big short squeezes and long squeezes as opposed to steady growth. We're not seeing that. And it makes the market incredibly volatile and incredibly unpredictable. And so if you throw the time frames out to weeklies, if you do the same stuff that we're doing with Sherlock Waves, standard deviations support resistance the sherlock strat everything you've learned but on weekly time frames and daily you're going to be able to survive this market right uh, uh best crypto keeping your portfolio in your opinion none right now uh for reasons that i've just explained with the rate hikes uh we are in a weak market right now the dollar is increasing in value you at you want to buy to accumulate for long term when it comes to them slowing down on the rate hikes right now it's not a good time to hold any kind of um asset for a long 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 time <clears throat> uh it tracks with other predictions i've been considering to be to be honest ah okay that's good then spectator it just makes sense in my mind right because over the past couple of days, I've been looking at the charts, trying to work out from a macroeconomic perspective where this is going. Because I like doing that, right? This is how I predict things. This is how I work things out is throwing those time frames out, trying to work out where we're going long term, and then playing the short term game in and out on the way there. And when, I, when, I, when, the, when the light bulb kind of clicked in my brain yesterday with this scenario, it was like oh shit okay yeah i see i see now but with that scenario that i've just thrown out there for you guys that's how we're going to see the 100k bitcoin the 200k bitcoin the 300k bitcoin 
is once those rate hikes slow down, once those rate hikes stop, and that and that inflation that's been hiding in the background hits the market all at once.